morning everybody so we're here again on a big big uh, residential house and garage way on the top of the hill we got a pretty decent view today if we if you look out over here the sun does rise over there there's the east but looking out over the ocean we're gonna get this thing done today we're just doing the house today we're gonna come back and do the garage tomorrow because we couldn't get enough concrete for both we're gonna dangle pump the house pretty good sized house about 2400 square feet down there in the basement Right on styrofoam, got a 4 inch floor, 3500 psi with fiber mesh, water reducer. So it's just getting ready to get at it right now. So let's, let's get this done. Bony there to start with, didn't it? Really surprised that went through. <laughs> right, go time. Guy forgot his dog. He left. He left. Dog's right there. He left his dog. He's only got seven and a half on, okay? I don't, I don't know how far that'll go, but probably not very far. Yeah, Gotta get some right where you are, yeah. Okay, Adam, thank you. Yep. Was there a, yeah. was there a mark in that corner or no? No, there wasn't over here. I'm just going to check it with my tape. I don't think there was one on that wall either, was there? No. Let me get in there for a sec. for around 30, 31. Just check where we got it mag too then versus, you know what I mean? Hey guys, so let's let's talk a little shop out here. I want to know some things from you guys about, you know, what's your what's your bread and butter? Like, if you, I know a lot of you guys out here watching this video, you do concrete work like I do. Um, some of you do a lot of decorative stuff, so, and some of you do floors and slabs like I do. Some of you do multiple things like we do. But let me know. I want to know what your bread and butter is. I'll, uh, you know, for us, pouring floors like this. This is our bread and butter. Like, and what I mean by that is like, this is the simplest form of concrete that we do that involves the less risk of anything going wrong. Rarely, if ever, do we have something go wrong when we pour and finish a concrete floor. And it might be, you know, this, this type of work right here might be what we charge the less, the least to do as far as labor goes. Like, generally we're about two bucks a square foot in that in that ballpark to come in here and pour and finish a concrete floor for a regular 
contractor, a guy that gives us a lot of work. Um, so two bucks a square foot labor, you know, it's in a lot of times if we're working for a GC or a foundation guy, the concrete gets charged to them, so we don't have to worry about that. The pump gets charged to them, we don't have to worry about that. I line everything up. I line up, I call the pump guy, I call the concrete guys and, and get everything scheduled, but you know, usually stuff's charged to them and then we come in and just charge for labor. So this right here is our bread and butter. So a 2,400 square foot concrete floor like this, you know, I charge it out, it's $4,800 for the day. And the, yeah, there's five of us here pouring, but three of us will leave right after the pour. So concrete shows up at seven, nine o'clock at the latest. We're usually done if we get all our trucks right after the other, one right after the other. Two guys stay here in power trial and saw it. They're done about three o'clock, you know. So, I mean, you figure it out depending on your labor rates. Um, generally, I figured it out. It, it, it would be about a thousand bucks in labor. You know, if you include all the travel time, figure your men at about 30 bucks an hour. Guys get done at three o'clock. So that's left, you're left with 3,800 bucks on something like this that as we, you know, when you're talking about concrete, you're always talking about risk. Something can always go wrong. You just never know. Um, but for us, this is the least amount of risk that we have to worry about as far as, you know, going to work and pouring and finishing concrete. Because we, we do a bunch of stuff. So I want to know from you guys, you know, what's your bread and butter? What do you do? Do you do, you do more than just pour and finish, like, floors like this? Do you do stamp? Do you do overlays? Do you do epoxies? Do you do staining? Do you do polishing? Uh, let me know down in the comments. And then if you do do multiple things like we do, you know, what's your bread and butter? What's the one thing? What's your go-to thing that you could do the most of? Never really have any callbacks. Just show up, do your work, bill it out, get move on to the next one. Because some of the other stuff we do, it's a little bit more, you know, techie. There's more things that, at risk that can go wrong. You know, stamping, you just never know. There's, I mean, you get a day that's sunny and windy, you could have you could have trouble with the stamping. Um, you get two different loads, sometimes the colors could be off. You get a really hot day, you know, sometimes the stamping, it could look different where you start from where you finish if you, if you pour, you know, a good size square foot job. Um, overlays, again, overlays, you never know. Sometimes one bag might set up faster than the other. Um, there's just a bunch of different things that could go wrong with that. Epoxies, same thing. I mean, sometimes, sometimes, most of the time, we don't have trouble with any of the epoxy stuff we do. Occasionally, you know, you just maybe, maybe you didn't mix it enough. Maybe something was wrong with the batch. Sometimes you might get a soft spot here and there. You just stuff you worry about, you know, when you show up the next day. Um, that you hope nothing goes wrong, but sometimes stuff does. But you know, generally with a floor like this, the only thing we got to worry about is if the weatherman was right or not. You know, <laughs> we just don't want to get rained on. Other than that, we're probably not going to have any trouble until sometimes late in the fall when you get the really cold nights. So you show up in the subgrades pretty cold, and then you know you pour on. The sun comes out temperature goes from being 32 degrees to being 60 degrees in the middle of the afternoon sometimes you can develop some trouble with with surface blistering and stuff like that but for the most cases this is our bread and butter so you know it's uh it's uh, what we've done the most of it's what we like to do and we still like doing all that other stuff we can actually make more money sometimes at doing that other stuff per square foot but again you know there's always you know the higher the the higher the risk, usually the higher the reward is, is what we say. And that's definitely true in the concrete business. So you guys, let me know down there what's your, what's your lowest risk bread and butter type thing. And then what's your highest risk type thing. All right, we're on the third truck. Definitely, two trucks definitely went over halfway. So looking pretty good on yardage right now.
good, Javier. Yeah. This is actually a pretty nice looking mix we're using today. We're about an hour and a half away from the shop. Um, we're working for a regular contractor, the guy that does the walls. They're, they give us a ton of work. So that's why we're down here this far. And we don't usually use this company. I mean, we have in the past off and on, but not, not definitely not regularly. So you never know. This is one thing that worries me about doing floors is, you know, when you do travel a little bit more of a distance, you get away from your regular, regular guy you use. You don't know what the mix is going to be like. You just never know. We were actually pleasantly surprised with this one. It felt really creamy for a 3,500 pound mix. Had a lot of really good paste in it, I thought. Uh, and you can tell if you're a concrete guy, you know what I mean. You can just tell when you first feel it what it's gonna, if it's gonna be a nice mix or not. So we, that's one thing I worry about a lot when we travel far away. Just never know what you're gonna run into. You guys, let me know if you run into that a little bit. If you use multiple companies, do the mix designs seem really different to you? He's out. It is when they get the mix really close to the first shot. Yeah. Definitely no separation in this mix. Oh, easy. I can get one more there, I guess. Try to get one right here. Now for us, that X I put on there, that means that pad's ready to be struck off. It means it's right at grade, so when the guys go to screed it, they know not to step in that pad and it's good to go. It's just that's one of the things that we've done a lot, you know, is we will set the laser up down there. We could sometimes we'll drive pins in, put a nail through them right at grade. We'll do it that way too. But, you know, the trouble with doing that is now you got preset, you got preset places where your pads are going to go, which is fine. But sometimes you don't always know where the end of the truck's going to run out. You might have a section left that you want to get screeded, but you don't have a pin in there with a nail through it to make a pad with. So, that's a lot of the reasons why we just set the laser up. And that way we can just put a we can put a pad anywhere we want, wherever we need it, even if we need, you know, two or three. In certain areas we'll just get them shot, put the X in them and then we're ready to go. And that and another thing, my guys like to strike them off by hand. We could really just use the vibra screed down there and really not even bring that 14 foot hand screed down, but it's just old habits, it's just the way we've always done it. Strike them by hand. That way we know they're perfect. Um, and then, as you can see Luke right there, use the Viber screed going off those pads. I've seen some guys use those Viber screeds and they're not even ha using a pad. They're just running it right over the rough concrete. I have no idea how they're getting into grade, how their floor's coming out flat. I mean, I've been doing this 40 years this way and I would never just rake it out and then run the Viber screed over it. I would you got to have something to go by is at least my thinking but i guess there's more than one way to skin a cat so yeah you, can, you know more power to them if they can get them flat that way all right had a little bit of a wait for that fourth truck but we got him now we're gonna get this thing down get it done Good 
too high to pick your knee a little bit. You gotta pump a little in there, Harry. Where'd he go? Right there, right there, right there. Couple more, Scott. Whew. Legs don't kick like they used to. No, I went dancing this weekend, too. <laughs> I did. Did you? Let's go. What are we going to do here? Take off Just that one be good for a minute. Take it right off. Yeah, thank you. Gonna we'll hold that right there. Be a weight. I think a pump right out there would be okay. Okay. that one. Yeah, we're quite low. I'm gonna need another pump right there. <coughs> yeah. You drop it down a little please. <sighs> Stop so quick. Yeah. Well, I stopped it before he said, Good, it takes a moment to squeeze it and stop draining too. Squeeze it and stop draining, huh? You want much of that lately? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bud. You will. Can I have a ladder? Ladder? Please. You take that out, Scott. I need a shovel full, but just about.
I see guys that use those emergency escape ladders. Yeah. Put them on the foundation. We had one. We need another one. Yeah. Other options like hanging a two by across here and then hanging a ladder off of that. Yeah. Anything so you don't have to. Yep, pretty. We'll come back after you, Darren. Tomorrow or so. Let us know when you're done. Don't stand in one spot for too long, you'll be there forever. <laughs> oh, is that what you're doing? Okay. I think I took it out of the garage. We had a little bit of a wait for that fourth truck. I know the guy said he was going to send me four trucks right back to back, and then I guess he decided to re-trip the first one. So there was a little bit of a gap in between the number three and number four. But luckily it wasn't too much, and it wasn't, as you, we're all wearing sweatshirts, so it's not that hot today. I guess that's another thing. If you're in the middle of the summer and it's hot, and it's 90 out in the sun, you know, sometimes you can have a cold joint there. I guess that's one thing that could go wrong with these floors, but... Um, luckily today it didn't really affect us that much it's still pretty cool out they were about a half hour away so they didn't have a, a lot of a lot of um they weren't that far away so it didn't take them a long time to get back here but all in all as you can see everything went pretty good darren's going to get that little piece magged out we'll throw the ladder back down there that's the one thing we, we used to have a nice ladder that hooked on top of the wall but it broke and then it just hung in there so it wouldn't go down in the concrete we got to get another one of those <laughs> you guys got any good ideas for those let me know down in the comments so i can check that out but this the way we do it here with this ladder is just a pain in the butt but thanks for watching guys you know make sure you hit subscribe if you're not subscribed yet come on back we'll see you on the next one